Well, welcome everybody. This is, like I said, Elport Community Church, and you are welcome in these last days to join us here. And we are going to read from the New Testament in the Gospel according to John, uh, chapter 6. I'm going to start reading from verse 26. If you want to look in the Pew Bible in front of you, that would be page 887. That's John, chapter 6. I'm going to read to you from verse 26. John 6, 26 says, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. Not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the se his seal of approval. They replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one that he has sent they answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna, which they journeyed through the wilderness. I'm sorry, when they journeyed through the wilderness, the scriptures say that Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Verse 32, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. However, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all of those who he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up on the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. And how can he say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, stop complaining about what I said. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. And it is written in the scriptures, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I who was sent from God have seen him. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they ate and died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer so the world may live, is my flesh. Then the people began arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they asked. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. Here's a heavy one, guys. I'm going to take a deep breath. I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. I will raise that person on the last day. Oh my gosh, 
Yikes. I'm about done. For my flesh is the true food, and my blood is the true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. I live because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate manna, but will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. Ah, many of his disciples says, this is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, does this offend you? Then what will you think if you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very word I have spoken to you, their spirit and life. But some of you do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe. And he knew who would betray him. Then he said, that is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. This is John chapter 6, verse 66 verse 66 of John chapter 6. This is startling. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and says, well, are you going to leave? I would say also. Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know that you are the Holy One of God. I'll just stop there. There's a lot more I can get into. I read you a very healthy chunk of scripture there. All right, and my point is this. Is the gospel offensive? Well, it is to a lot of folks. It's not meant to be, but it is what it is. Uh, would you mind this morning? Now, this is a show of hands. Be prepared. Tom is going to ask us to raise our hands or not. So just be warned. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But uh, would you mind if I offended you this morning? <laughs> I wouldn't raise my hand either. Okay, let me ask you. Would you mind if I just went deep into the scriptures this morning? How many would? Yes. That means you raise your hand. If not, stay shallow. Okay. <laughs> this eating my flesh and drinking my blood, you want to talk about a turnoff? You want to talk about, what are you talking about, man? We're not cannibals. We don't do that. Are you meaning something deep or symbolic? Or do you mean that we literally eat your flesh and drink your blood? Because, you know, to this day, there are folks who believe every time they take communion that it somehow miraculously, spiritually turns into the literal uh, blood and body of Christ. I don't happen to believe that. Most of what we would call the Protestant movement does not believe that. It is our understanding and our belief that it is symbolic. That Jesus asked us to take this Passover meal, and we call it now the Lord's Supper or communion. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember how my body was broken. Remember how my blood was shed. As often as you do this, do this in memory of me. We would call that symbolic. And we would call uh, you know, baptism symbolic as well. Uh, we are not going to hold you down literally until you die or drown, right? And then pick you up and resurrect you. I mean, no, that's not literal. It is symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So communion and uh, you know, the baptism of the Lord is what we as Christians celebrate in honor of our Lord, in remembrance, remembrance of our Lord, and, and, and worship of our Lord. There's another one that not everybody's in agreement with, but it's called... Marriage. Marriage. <laughs> Is that how you say it? Marriage. Uh, a lot of people married, and that's a good thing. Uh, and it's ordained of the Lord. God designed it, God invented it, and it's awesome. Right? And when we do it, it's kind of symbolic. I mean, it's real, but it's also symbolic of the Lord being joined to his church. And when we honor him in marriage, we're actually worshiping him. In communion, a baptism, a marriage, and there's other sanctified events that others would say, but I at least adhere to those three. Have I gone too deep for you here? Jesus came, he explained himself, 
He did many miracles. He said wonderful things. And some people only followed him because he gave them a sandwich. They just wanted to see miracles. Show us another one, Jesus. They're eating popcorn. What's he going to do now? Is he going to walk on water? Is he going to multiply something? Hey, we're hungry. Come on, Jesus. Dance, monkey, dance. They just wanted Jesus for some stupid, selfish, superficial uh, reason. And Jesus laid down the gauntlet. Are you going to follow me for real? I'm going to say something outrageous to you. And I'm going to say something, uh, you know, maybe offensive to you. But those who really love me and come to me and ask questions and dig deep and want to know, it will all be made clear. Of course, I don't want you to participate in cannibalism. What I meant was, just as the manna came from heaven, so have I come down to you. And I know you ate that manna in the wilderness uh, in the time of Moses to sustain yourself. God said that. I come to you in an even deeper way. And all those who do actually for real, for real, come to me, will be fed in their inside out, in their spirit, and they will receive life and sustenance. And that ultimately leads to life eternal. It's much deeper than a cannibalistic kind of thing. Would you agree? I sure hope you agree. Not one head nodded, but I know inside you guys are with me, even though it's very hard. So the things that Jesus said in the Gospel of John, we've been going through that for the over a month now. You've heard about this. You've seen the paintings. You've done all this. What we're really, really trying to do here is get real with Jesus. What did he really say? What did he really do? Was this just some hooby-jooby, pie-in-the-sky stuff? Or is Jesus becoming a man, living among us? Is he really trying to communicate God's heart with us? That is our attempt here at Elport Community Church to explore the Bible. And if this version, uh, the New Living Translation, isn't deep enough for you, I would encourage you, you know, go get yourself a, a King James and study it, or, or an ESV, or other uh, kind of study Bibles, and look deeper. This is a conversational version to whet your appetite, and I really hope it does that. You know, I report, you decide. Is that okay? Gosh, i got to oil your neck muscles so your, your heads will go like this. Right? That would be, yes, Tom, we encourage you. We're listening to you. That's an awesome thing. So Jesus came. He said many things. People just wanted to see superficial stuff from him. I mean, not all of them were in their heart of hearts following him. He did cool stuff. He, he, could, do, he could do miracles. He healed people. Let's just see what he's going to do next. And lots and lots, thousands of people are following him at this point. And Jesus, at this instance, he thinned the herd greatly. Do you know why? Because Jesus never read Dale Carnegie's book. Anybody ever heard, ever heard of Dale Carnegie? He wrote a book, thank you, he wrote a book back in the 1930s called How to Win Friends and Influence People. It was a very popular seller, and it's uh, for business types, for uh, you know, all kinds of businesses, all kinds of sales people. They've all read the book. Dale Carnegie was a very upbeat person. Uh, he taught you, first thing, if you read his book or took one of the Carnegie courses, and they're still available today, the first thing you want to do if you want to win friends and influence people is do not offend them, right? Get them smiling and keeping them smiling. Do not offend, do not, oh, do not ever, ever condemn people. No, 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 there's no consequence here. You're good. I'm okay. You're okay. Keep them happy. Keep them smiling. Keep the tails wagging. All right? That's the Dale Carnegie course. Never offend. Never condemn. Oh, 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 here's another one. Never criticize. It's all okay, man. It's all good. This doesn't sound like the gospel, does it? Jesus never read the book, like I said. Uh, always coddle people and flatter them. Oh, you look so lovely today. Oh, you smell wonderful today. Oh, uh, you painted your nails. That's, that's beautiful. Oh, that dress that goes with your eyes. Yes, yes. Anything to build you up. Anything to keep you smiling and happy on the, on, on the upswing. Even if you're lying. Just do it. Right? This is Dale Carnegie. Uh, find common ground with people. Oh, yeah. I was like that once. Oh, yeah. I was through that. Um, and just keeping them, making them your friend and telling them basically everything they want to hear. Like I said, Jesus never read this book. Jesus never did that. Jesus told the truth. And if it offended you, grow up. <laughs> oh well, he is the truth, right? 
He's not saying it with the intention of offending you. That's not his goal. Uh, but ultimately, sometimes, what do they say? The truth hurts. Sometimes we're living in our little delusional worlds and people you know, have taken away our trophies. And no, everybody's a winner. We're all good. It's okay. Kumbaya. Join hands. It's, it's all good. It's all... Jesus never read that book. And he wasn't afraid. Find common ground. Make people eager. Lead the conversation. If you're going to be an influencer, like a, a car salesman or a real estate salesman, you are leading them to what they call a yes or yes question. Do you hate yourself? Do you hate life? Well, then buy this product and you will love life and hate yourself less. How could you say no to this? I have to convince you because I'm leading the conversation. You came into my domain. You walked into the parking lot. You walk into my office. You're sitting in my chair. I've given you the donut. I've given you the coffee. You're mine. <laughs> That's Dale Carnegie for you. Jesus didn't, didn't do that. Lead the conversation. Smile a lot. The salesman or the influencer in Dale Carnegie's book, always smile. Lead the conversation. And at all costs, ladies and gentlemen, avoid arguments. Never argue with a customer or a potential friend or a potential whatever. Never argue. Like I said, Jesus never read the book. He argued with Pharisees and scribes and so-called religious people. He, he would tell them. He would call them out. He, he, would, he would say, you're a whitewashed sepulcher full of dead man's bones. Yeah, Jesus said that. Jesus said, you are of your father the devil. <laughs> My goodness, he never read this book. Oh, here's, here's the last one I'll say. Dale Carnegie says, no matter how dreadfully boring or uninteresting these people are, always pretend you're interested. Keep them on the hook. You fake it until you make it. Jesus never did that. Jesus is 100% real. But Tom, we want to grow our church. We want to be influential in our, uh, our, um, our communities, right? We got to read Dale Carnegie's book. We got to stop offending people, right? When people come at me with their pronouns and their things like this, don't, don't, don't rock the boat, Tom, please. Don't say anything. Always smile, always <laughs> hug and kumbaya, right? Jesus never taught that. Now, Jesus never told us ever to go out for the explicit uh, purpose of winning the argument or offending people. That is not what we're talking about. Jesus has given us his word. The Father in heaven gave us manna from heaven, and he gave us the person of Christ. That beautiful body of Christ was broken and bruised and beaten. That wonderful blood of an innocent man, Jesus Christ, that was shed for our salvation. To cover us, to forgive us once and for all. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not going to hide that fact. A lot of people go out there and they do the best they can to prove themselves or to win or to do this. They've read this Carnegie book and they're just trying to get over and they're trying to be happy but there's no way to get inside of a person's heart and make them truly happy it's it's always fleeting isn't it it comes for a while and then it flies away like a dove what Jesus is saying hey he's saying this even if it offends you you come to me 100 percent yeah you come to me as a sinner of course but do not wave your flag of sin in the face of Jesus Christ. Come as you are, but do not remain as you are. Repent of your sins. Get baptized. Come to Him. Get real with Him. He will teach you. He'll take the grave clothes off of you like when Lazarus came out of the tomb. Our job as believers is to become His disciples. And that might hurt. When you read the God, it might expose you. It might expose parts of your life. And that is meant to heal you, not to humiliate you, not to destroy you. I mean, Jesus, he could have been like all nicey-nicey, but he would, say, he would heal this guy who, who, we read about this, who was paralyzed for 38 years, who Against hoping against hope, thought he could get in this pool of Bethesda and be healed, but it never happened, it never happened. And Jesus says, do you want to be healed? The guy says, well, okay, he ultimately got healed, right? 
What Jesus could have said was, Oh, Mr. Bear, Mr. Cuddly Wuddly, I love you. No, he said, Now go and sin no more. That wasn't nice. He could have said a lot of cuddly things, couldn't he have? He said, Now go and sin no more. Huh. He didn't mean to offend that guy. He was giving the guy the truth. He was straightening him out. No holds barred. If you love the Lord, prove it by how you conduct yourself. You don't prove it to earn your salvation, but as a result of being saved, how can I serve you? How can I talk about it? How can I love you, Lord? You've set me free. You've changed my life. You've given me a hope and a future. You've filled my heart with gladness. What can I do for you? Now the good works come. Right? But, you know, getting back to Dale Carnegie, getting back to this world, getting back to Jesus being real, right? We, us, who love him, we, Christians who, who serve him and who search his word and we're trying to put off the old things that were killing us and, and, and put on the new things which are Christ. We have to talk about this thing called sin. Sin is not our idea. Sin is not our invention. But sin is an issue. Uh, we in the church, we've downgraded that word. We've called it, I got a problem. Well, yeah, you got a problem. I got problems. We all got problems, right? Jesus loves you in spite of your problems. Understood. But your problem is deeper. Your problem is sin. And this is by definition of the Bible, not Tom's opinion. This is not Tom with his holy club looking for something to mess up. Ah, sinner! Ah, you sin! No, 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 no. I, too, am a sinner. I, too, have made many mistakes, said dumb things, I mean, just to define sin, in case anybody's wondering, it's something you think, say, or do that separates you from God Almighty. Anything that you can possibly think, say out of your mouth, or do in this world that separates you from God, that is sin. And God has made it clear, He hates sin. Because the wages of sin is death. And Jesus didn't come to kill you. He would that you had life and life more abundantly. He has said so. He said the thief, yeah, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus told us, I have given, come to give you life and life more abundantly. But Jesus has also told us we have to deal with our sin. And the only way we're going to deal with our sin is to kneel at the foot of the cross to come and give it all and say, I am sorry, I repent. Guilty as charged, Lord, but I appeal to your mercy. I appeal to your amazing grace. Give me this bread that comes from heaven and this precious blood that you've shed. I need it. I cannot do it on my own. My good behavior is not going to get me there. I do not measure up. I've tried. I've gone on my programs where I'm going to get off of this stuff and get on that stuff, and they're very helpful. But ultimately, the best healing, the best deliverance, the best salvation, the only salvation is from Jesus himself. And Jesus is a straight shooter. He's not going to you know, mince words here. He's not going to risk offending you. He's going to tell you the truth. There's some things in your life that you need to look into. Now, here's, here's one thing. You guys know this. Uh, if you're ever out and about in a, in a public place or at work or at school and people confront you about this, that, and the other, and you give your opinion or you give your thoughts concerning the Scriptures, one of the things they say, you are judging me! Doesn't your Bible say, thou shalt not judge or judge not, lest you be judged? Doesn't the Bible say that? I'm always amazed by how many atheists know that one scripture. They don't know the Bible worth anything, but they know that one scripture, and they'll throw that one in your face. How do they know the one scripture? Because it's convenient for them at the time. Just, you know, put on the coaster brakes here for a minute. Ma'am or sir, I am not judging you, because I too am a sinner. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm coming to Jesus daily. You know, I say the Lord's Prayer every day. Forgive us. 
our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. I do it every day. I'm not judging you. Do you know what is judging you? Not me. The Word of God. The bar has been set by God Almighty Himself. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and your strength. Don't make any graven images. Don't use my name in vain. Remember the Sabbath. Honor your mom and dad. That's God's standard. I don't always do that. Don't steal. Don't lie. Do not commit murder. That's God's standard. He said that. And then Jesus took that bar and he raised it even higher to make it even more impossible. I never killed anybody, Lord. Oh, okay. Do you ever want to? <laughs> well, yeah, just the other day. I wish I'd have killed that guy, cut me off in traffic. I wished a curse upon him. Oh, okay. Did you ever uh, steal anything? Well, uh, I, they had too many and I needed one. Uh, oh, yeah? You ever covet and want some that belongs to somebody else? Yeah, real bad. They didn't deserve it and I deserve it. Oh, you've done this in your heart. This is the thing that Jesus comes to your heart. Ever commit adultery? No! Ever want to? <clears throat> it's impossible to live a sinless life. We need a sinless Savior. We need the Holy Forgiver. We need washed in that blood. We need Jesus, and He has come. The Scripture reveals to us what sin is, what God requires, and has also revealed to us the One who takes away the sins of the world by becoming a curse on that tree. He, whoever hangs on that tree, shall be cursed of God. He endured it, He overcame it, and He beat it on the third day. He's our champion. He's my Savior, my Lord, my Healer. I'm not judging you when I don't say your pronouns that you require. My God said he's created male and female. And he meant them to raise families. That was his goal. That was his will. We twist it to our own liking. We take the Mona Lisa and draw a mustache on it. You don't take beautiful works of art and defile them. I will say this. I would rather offend you that offend God. I'm not trying to judge you. I don't want to get on your bad side. I don't want to make you feel small. But you're coming at me with something upside down and you're calling it right side up. Sorry, I ain't playing it. You know, like the king's new clothes. You've heard the story. Everybody like, well, we don't want to offend the king. It looks great. And what was it? The little boy says, I don't see nothing. He told the truth. <laughs> right, you've heard that story. Anyway, when they come to me, I say, um, it's not that I want any trouble with you. It's not that I think I'm better than you. But God said it. God is the inventor of it. And I'm just honoring him. Um, in, in 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 15. This is uh, the Apostle Peter talking to Christians. That's us. Don't worry or be afraid about their threats. This is the people in the world who think you're stupid because you're a Bible-believing Christian. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord in your life. And if someone asks about the Christian hope, about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. Always be prepared to give an answer, the King James says. But do this in a gentle and respectful way way. Keep your conscience clear. Ma'am, sir, young lady, young man, I'm not out to hurt your feelings. I'm not out to act like that I'm better than you. I'm not. I'm guilty of so many things. All I'm, all I'm doing in my conversation with you is honoring my Lord, my God, my Savior, and my healer. I once was lost, but now I'm found, just like that Amazing Grace song. I was blind, but now I see. The only reason I see, the only reason is not because I'm smarter than you or better than you in any way. It is only by this amazing grace that I can stand here. Young man, young lady, I'm not trying to make trouble with you. I'm not trying to offend you. Obviously, I am. But that is not my intention. My intention is to be faithful to my Lord, my God, and my Savior. The prophet Isaiah said, Woe to those who call good evil and evil good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in an upside-down world that doesn't even acknowledge God. 
And the only time they'll quote his word is to make you look stupid. You're judging me. You know, I've kind of thought about this, and I have a, like Peter said, I kind of have a reasonable answer to that. I, I would just say this, hey, I appreciate you quoting the Bible to me. Thank you. But, you know, English language, you've got to, like, study it and, and I find these things. Sometimes they use the same word for three different things, this word judge. The Bible is very clear that we should use judgment, that we should have sound judgment, that we should evaluate all that's around us by the word of God, of course, using our judgment. But the Bible tells us we are not to cast sentence or pull sentence on someone. We don't pull the lever that the hangman's noose takes over, and we don't push the button that gives them the electrical charge that kills them in the electrical chair. That is pronouncing that kind of judgment that Jesus was talking about. Don't do that. You are not the executioner. I got that. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I got the final say. I will judge heaven and earth. I will judge every woman, man, child, whatever, nations, tribes, tongue. I will do it. I will do it righteously. My heart trusts him. He will judge righteously. He will not be unfair. What about the people that never heard the gospel? What about the people that did this? He will judge them fairly. I'm not worried. You will be responsible for what you know, and so will I. And the judge of the whole earth is my Jesus. You said, judge not that you shall not be judged. I will say, you're right. I will not cast sentence on you. I'm not your executioner. I'm just telling you, I'm using my judgment, what I've read in the, in the book. Don't call evil good, and don't call good evil. That's what the Bible says, and that's all I'm trying to do, sir, ma'am. not trying to offend you. Please, once again, don't ever think that I think I'm better than you. I'm not. Never have been. Like Peter said, be prepared to give an answer, but with gentleness and respect. I mean, we're not called in this world to win every single argument. We'll have our, our times, our chances at that. I've had my, my share, and I've won some arguments. I've lost some arguments. That's not the important thing. Bring Jesus with you. Seek peace, re pursue it, and, and, and don't think for one minute that you are the executioner. You're not. You're just a witness. You know, why are you going around bragging about this guy and he healed you? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what you guys are talking about. All I know is this. I used to be blind, and now I see. That's my testimony. I don't know how to explain it. The guy's amazing. He does miracles. He saves. He heals. He delivers. He does wonderful things. And my hope is in him forever. That's all I'm saying. And I know he loves you in your sin. He doesn't love your sin. He loves you. And he's telling you the truth. You need to deal with that sin. Anything that separates you from God, I'll tell you the truth. God hates it. God hates sin. For this reason only. Because sin is killing you. Thoughts, words, activities. He hates that. And I'm going to say this again. This is also in John chapter 3. You heard it a million times. But really hear it. God loves the world so much. That he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him. Would not perish. But have everlasting life. Guys, if you love your sin so much, if you identify with your sin so much that you would say, nah, Jesus, forget about you, you are missing out big time. That love, the love of Jesus can save you, can heal you and deliver you. And if you want to turn your back on that, I feel really bad for you. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It ain't easy. It ain't popular sometimes. You know, I've talked about that. Being alone at the lunch table. All these guys are over there gossiping or telling their dirty jokes or talking about this, that, and the other, and you're sitting alone with your sandwich saying, oh, Lord, bless this food I'm about to receive. You know, sometimes it's a lonely walk when you serve the Lord. You're going to be the odd man out in different conversations. The lonely boy or the lonely girl. But he's got your back he is with you. He'll take the hits for you. He'll yoke up beside you. He will get you 
through. He'll get you over or he'll get you through. He will always prevail. He told us in the book of Revelation, I have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He is the champion. He is our Lord. We shouldn't be ashamed of him. Now me, I am ashamed of myself. <laughs> I ought to be even more ashamed of myself. But I'm not ashamed of him. So, does the gospel offend you? Does it offend you? Especially in this day and age. Who is the gospel offending? Really, think about that. Jesus was willing to stand up, even when he had followers. Hey, I got thousands of people following me. They follow me over here. I do a miracle. And then I got more following me. And this is awesome. Jesus didn't look at it that way. Jesus wanted who was for real. Why are you following me? Because I give you a free lunch? Because I do magic tricks or miracles, whatever you think they are? He broke it by saying something outrageous, didn't he? Oh, so you want to be my followers, huh? Are you prepared to eat my flesh and drink my blood? Wait a minute, Jesus. You're talking crazy now. Well, then go, on, go about your way. What? Would Jesus do that? If you are a player, if you are a fake and a fraud, if you're not seeking Jesus, but you're just joining the church so you can sell a few cars or sell some insurance, Jesus knows who's real, who's seeking him for real. Jesus knows when a lost sinner's crying out from their heart, looking for help, looking for salvation, looking for answers. Jesus knows, but he knows the shysters and the wolves and the snakes. Why are you guys following me? He sure weeded them out, didn't he? He offended them, and they left. Thousands of them. Would, would they do that in a mega church today? We've got to pay the bills here, man. We've got this big old church. We can't be offending these people. Let's just dial it back a little bit. Keep them happy. You know, like, like Dale Carnegie taught us. Make up your mind, man. Who are you going to serve? Who do you love? <laughs> you know, where, where are you at in all this? Are you willing to take the hit for the truth? Or are you just going to melt back and say, Oh, I don't want no part of this, man. I don't want to offend nobody. You know, like I said, I don't, I don't think we should go out there with that attitude to be offensive. But just don't be ashamed of the gospel. You, you remember when Paul said that in Romans 1. I am not ashamed of the gospel. We're talking about a guy who is in jail, right? <laughs> He's on death row. For what? For preaching Jesus. Wow, I'm not there. I am not afraid of the gospel because that is the power of God unto salvation. Jesus saves. Jesus came for lost people like me. And my testimony is this. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, and now I see. That's kind of why I picked that song Amazing Grace today. I was trying to make friends and influence people. <laughs> you know, for the gospel's sake, of course. So, I'm not going to tell you to go out online and buy your copy of Dale Carnegie's book. Unless you want to, just to do your research. Because, hey, Dale helped a lot of people. And if you're uh, into sales or, or whatnot, it, it can help you uh, get through your day. Uh, my only advice to you is, hey, keep it real. Don't be a fake. And, and put God above all things. And God will bless you in that way. So what do you think? Was that too deep for you today? God is good. Don't be ashamed of him. He gave it all. He gave it all publicly. When he hung on that tree in public on the crossroads, all those people walking past him, shaking their heads, saying, he saved others. Why can't he save himself? It lasted for the night, but joy comes in the morning, guys. This is us. This is Christianity. This is the real Bible, the real Jesus. He'll send thousands away if they're fakes, but the couple, the, the few, the twelve who really love him, who really seek him, he'll never leave you or forsake you. Do you believe that? Then pray with me. Bow your heads, please. Father in heaven, we all come to you. And it's, it's kind of hard for us, Lord, to navigate this world we're living in. There's so much, wow, so much division. There's so much anger, Lord. There's so much 
differences of views and, and the shouting and the the, the anger. I mean, like I said, it's just, it's just hard, Lord, to, to be your disciple these days. We don't know what to say half the time, and we don't know we don't know when to say it. So, Lord, be with us. Give us wisdom, Lord. Help us as we read your word. Help us to break it down and understand it in a way that we could talk about it, Lord. And help us walk humbly, Lord, and, and do justly. And help us love mercy as we talk to our friends, our family, our coworkers, and, and, and people in our schools. And we just ask for your wisdom and your guidance. As we absorb your word into us, as we eat and as we drink in the, the, the wisdom and the power and the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ, be with us and enable us as we go through our days and our week. For we are your workmanship, created for good works in Christ. Please forgive us of our sins and, and lead us on for your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. God bless.